the intro is has been Frankenstein together. Bob is in. Well, I know you can't say where Bob is in a very uh, not um, internet friendly place because the internet is crazy where you're at. I'm, I'm in a hotel and my internet is wild, but um, you know what? We're here. We're filming. We're here, and we are here, and it's going down. It's popping off. Um, but this is this is a much better connection. I'm very very happy with what we have going on now. Um, I am playing the charger, uh, the charger tango. Do you ever do that? Where you take charger one device, tango. where you where you unplug one device and then charge the other one, and you go back and forth. Have <laughs> you never had to do that before? Will you no, leave with like one charger? No, bitch. When I go, I have my little my little uh, electric sack I bring that has like all the things. So I have this thing next to my bed at me and Jacob's place, and I also have one next to my bed at me and Ezra's place. It is it is this uh, mat. Well, at me and Jacob's place, I have this mat that you just put your phone on and you put your earbuds on, and it charges them overnight. And then mm-hmm. at Ezra's place, I have this little stand where I can um, put my phone, my earbuds, and my watch and charge them all together. Um, mm mm-hmm. And I tried to buy one here, but it, I went to Walmart. It was the wrong one. It wasn't working. So now I'm. So my little laptop charger is charging every device I own right now, like my my <laughs> headphones, my phone, my computer, my iPad. But I can. Use, I there is always one day where I don't have something. <laughs> you are really living that life out there, girl. Well, I went down to um, I went down there to to Walmart to buy one, but it was the wrong one. So. I was like, girl, you know what? Wait, Honestly, you bought the wrong one, or they, or they only had the wrong one available. They only had the wrong one available. So I, I it, it said it would charge my stuff, but it did not. And then I got back, and I was like, the lie detect, the lie detector determined that was a lie. Um, <laughs> so you one would say you have a few uh, resentments of of your on this most recent trip you're on right now. Would you, yeah, so, would, would, yeah, that, so would, Wal- would that be a fair statement? Yeah, resentments against Walmart. Um, <laughs> I mean, everyone should resent Walmart. They're fucking crazy. Um, Monet, I tweeted out something a while back that got a lot of backlash, and and wow. I didn't really mind. I didn't really mind the backlash. I tweeted out. I said, if it seems like I am resentful, uh, or have, it was something about white people. I tweeted that out, but I can't remember. Like the Jacob, sentiment being that you have resentments against white people against white people. Yeah, the resentment. The, the tweet was that um, I resent white people. <laughs> I mean, and that's fair and that's valid. A lot of people, they get really mad when we, like when I posted, oh, the thing recently when you were like, Monet keeps her, hot white, Monet keeps her house white people cold. Someone had, like, like th- about three or four people DM me. They were like, why do y'all always make everything black and white? And like, why you guys always have to make anything about race? And like, I, I really don't like that. I'm like, well, bitch, it's not for you to like. Then don't listen. Were they white people? I, I didn't, ch- I honestly didn't check. I just saw the message. I was like, this is stupid. And I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the profile pictures. I mean, that is, uh, when people come to the podcast and be like, I don't like this, I'm like, bitch, no one is, like, this is not, this is not the uh, the vaccine, there's no mandate, you don't have to listen to this fucking podcast, <laughs> you don't have to listen to this podcast, and especially right. folks who are just stumbling across it on YouTube and listen to it for free on the internet, I'm like, y'all right. niggas not even, y'all niggas not even patrons, it's like when people tell us, there, there's a couple people in our reviews saying they don't like to be used anywhere, I'm like, nigga, shut the fuck up. <laughs> nigga, shut. If you don't like when I use the N word, I'm talking to you specifically. Nigga, shut the fuck up and resent me. Oh, you and I had a good idea. Monique Hart was at my house the other day, and um, we and I was on the phone with Bob, and she came over, and we were talking. And Bob was using the N word, and then Monique, I forgot Monique doesn't like the N word, and then we which is so crazy because you're the one that told me she doesn't like it. Bob, you know my memory. My memory is shot. Girl, I can't remember what I did yesterday. My memory's fucked up, and I know I know that about myself. I know I have a, I, I know I have a horrible memory. It's part of my identity, and it is what it horrible. is. Horrible. So you ever heard Mateo go? Hor- oh, it was horrible. Mateo <laughs> always says horrible because he's where he in New Yorker. That motherfucker is from Chicago. Bitch, you from I, Chicago? Stay there. I don't think Mateo thinks he's. I, I think horrible is, is a Midwest thing. Mateo considers himself a New Yorker. Nick, I, I, no, consider- I, I also consider myself a New Yorker when I was living in New York City for 12 years, but I don't think I have a New York accent. I don't think Mate- and Mateo knows he has, a, he has a Chicago accent. It's like a Midwest Chicago thing. I think they say horrible in Chicago. Oh, this is horrible. Ah, that sounds very Bostonian, very New York to me. Well, Boston and New York do not sound the same. 
They don't sound the same, but they are similar. They are very close parallels to Boston and New York, for sure. For well, sure. Well, I think I think the north part of America, this whole northeast corner, um, I mean, nor- yeah, northeast corner is um had very like it's like like I feel like a Georgian will know the difference between a Texas accent and a Georgian ac- and a Georgia accent. Oh yeah, and even Louisiana accents has like notes of this like Creole, yeah, but, but it's also country. Um. But you know, like in Boston, like Tyler, get get out of the car and come over here and tell me to ba ba da ba. Bitch, what? okay, I, I have to get into the suite. Bob said, in all seriousness, if it ever seems like I have anger and resentment toward white people, that's only because I have anger and resentment toward white people. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I didn't see this. Then Asia O'Hara said, Wait, isn't isn't your boyfriend white? Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Yeah, that was Asia O'Hara's like Ooh! And Bob said he's certainly not exempt. Um, he's certainly not. He, uh, yeah, he's certainly, he's certainly not exempt, and he tweeted a picture of Jacob. Um, also, Asia, Asia, trying, Asia does. Asia doesn't like when I call white people out. Like she hates it. Like she why? does not. I do not know. And she's always like trying to like catch me and like like she's gonna get me. And, like, haha, your boyfriend's white, and I'm like, yeah, one of my boyfriends is white, and. <laughs> Like, I don't think I could date, I don't think I could date a white person who didn't understand that America has a inherent systemic problem with racism. And if I was dating a white person who was like, I think America's great. I think white people as a whole are just kind of really nailing it right now. Yeah, no I way. Would have, I would have a very hard time dating that person. I, I, I know that um, a friend of mine was dating a guy. What about he, a black person that thought that, fought that? I would have a hard time with that too. Right. I would have a very, okay, here are the things I would have a hard time dating. A Christian. Like a devout, not even devout, a person who believes they will die, meet Jesus, and go to heaven. I can't date you. It's a wrap. We cannot. I'm telling you, not, I can't date a Christian. I cannot date a Muslim. I cannot date a Jewish person who is like deeply like. If you are, if you are of one of the the three main Judeo Christian religions, and you like, you are like serious about it, like if you're Catholic, you're like, oh no, I'm actually eating the body of Christ. We can't fuck with each other. I have nothing. I have nothing to. We cannot share a life. We can't. Right. Yeah. Um, could you? I could, I, could, I could not vote a devout Christian. I could date someone who believes that God is a thing and, and like, but not uh, not someone involved, involved in organized religion or someone who goes to church every Sunday or someone, like you said, who eats the body of Christ. I'm like, I'm eating Jesus' body. I mean, that's crazy. But if you believe in a higher power and you believe and you're agnostic in that way, of course I could date you for sure. Because I'm like, probably, just like, I just like, I choose not to believe. It's your right to believe that. And I, and I could absolutely, I could date someone like that for sure. I think it's everyone's right to believe it, but it's also my right to be like, I'm not dating you. You know what I mean? And you like my I, shirt? Isn't this shirt so cute? You, you, you little chocolate, chocolate nuts, chocolate peanuts. Yeah. Anyway, continue. To everyone who's uh, listening, who's not watching right now. No, 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 don't tell them. Don't tell them. Them niggas need to, if, if y'all want to see the motherfucking shirt, you get the Patreon. Y'all niggas don't know what the fuck I got on. So you're saying everyone who's not a patron is a nigga? Wow. Yeah. And that's how. That's I have, re- I have resentments uh, against Christianity too. I got to be honest. Oh, for sure. I I have a lot of resentments towards uh, Christianity because it's how I grew up, and it's it's it is a big contributor to my fucking emotional fuck up scene. <laughs> so when I uh, when yeah. I met you when I met you, I remember you used to be like you used to be like Bob, please. Not, not, but I would be saying my anti-Christian stuff and I'd be like, nigga, do you agree or not? And you'd be like, you know, um, uh, when, I, when there I was first a, met you, there was a when, period when in when our I life where you, you were like, you were Jesus like is, there was, there was, I've, no, this, I've been this way for a while. I, I've been getting well, more vocal. as vocal about it. Well, when I first met you, like you had your, your beliefs about Christianity and I, but I've always, if people don't believe whatever, I'm, I'm, I've never been like, I can't be friends with them. But over the years, you have definitely turned up the dial on the anti, uh, uh Christianity. <laughs> you have definitely have. I agree. I, I, I agree with that. But I remember one day asking you if Jesus was your Lord and Savior and you, you didn't have, you did not have an answer for me. You were like, you know, it's like, we, we, we're on speaking terms. <laughs> we cool. We definitely cool. That's that's for sure. We cool. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What, um, why do you think you will ever reconcile with your Christian resentment? No, because I, I think that, that Christianity would have to stop harming the black community and the queer community first, especially the black community. Um, and that ain't happening. Bef- and that's not going <laughs> to... 
and, that, and that, <laughs> that's not gonna happen anytime soon. So I have a hard, but you know, I'm, I, I was in Monet's phone, which fell over, so I was acting like I was falling. Anyway, um, so I don't think I will, and I and I think that like my thing with Christianity is. In my mind, I'm like, is this is not real? Like this just didn't happen. And if it is real, I'll hate it even more. <laughs> like if it is real, I'll be like, I'm not hanging out with y'all niggas in heaven. I do not want to. I do not want to. I don't want to hang out with y'all. I know so hell is gonna. In I know hell. Fire and brimstone. I know hell's gonna be shit. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but like, like does hanging? Okay, hear me out. Let's say the conservative Christians are right. Do you want to be around them for eternity? <laughs> like, let's say they're right. Are those the people you want to hang out with for eternity? All I don't mean like I, I don't mean like for the rest of your life, longer than your life. That those are the, like let's say that let's say they're right about the gays, and let's say they're right about the right. you know all this stuff. Who who will you be hanging out with in heaven? <laughs> Well, that's the thing, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's 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 a valid point. I don't, I ain't trying to be, I ain't trying to eat lunch with them niggas. No, like, he, like, girl, hell is about to be pop it. <laughs> We're about to lose so many listeners. <laughs> 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 This is my first LA fall and I'm realizing now that it is nothing like a New York fall. I brought all the wrong clothes over and I'm very unprepared for the upcoming month. Fortunately, I found a new place where I can find great new staple clothing items at an affordable price. That's why Everlane makes premium quality essentials that complement every wardrobe at a more transparent, affordable price. Everlane has made quality clothing with ethical factories and radically transparent pricing since 2010. That is 11 years in the game, honey. They do extensive research and vetting to use ethical factories that provide fair wages and reasonable hours to the skilled people who craft their clothing. Timeless designs and the finest sustainable materials so you can wear them for years and years to come. Most retailers hide their markups, but Everland believes their customers have the right to know how much their clothes cost to make. In fact, they share exactly how much their products cost to produce at each stage. Everland has everything you need to upgrade your spring uniform, whether you're going out on the town with friends or having a movie night in with the family. From workout to takeout, swimwear to trackwear, styles for lounging at home or hitting up your favorite late night spot, their breathable organic cotton trackwear gives an elevated take on tried and true basics and get a head start on your summer look with Everlane's sustainable swimwear collection made from 13,768 pounds of recycled plastic. Go to everlane.com slash rivalry and sign up for 10% off your first order plus free shipping and get easy returns within 30 days of your ship date. That's 10% off your first order when you go to everlane.com slash rivalry and sign up. Even if your sex life is an open book, testing for sexually transmitted infections can feel invasive to your privacy. Like, for example, I was going to an STI test and the woman at the front desk was being very loud. And I was like, hey, I'm going to get an STI test. And she was like, what? And I was like, I, I, would, like, I would like to get an STI test. And she screamed, an STI test? And I was like, yes. And she was like, what STI test do you want? Or what do you think you have? Are you Bob a drag queen? And I was like, all right. So taking care of your sexual health is important, uh, not only for you, but for your partners. Thankfully, there's Everly Well at Home Lab Test. The process is simple. The Everly Well at Home Collection Kit is shipped discreetly in an undisclosed box right to your door and comes with easy to follow instructions so you can collect your sample from home in your own time. Once you send the sample back, it is processed in a certified lab and reviewed by a board certified physician. Then they are sent directly to you digitally within days. You can even share them with your healthcare provider and your partners. If results are abnormal, a board certified physician in your state may contact you at no additional cost to discuss your case and may prescribe medications if applicable. And now Everly Well has a brand new sexual health membership called Current that allows you to select one STI test of your choice per month with additional benefits, all for just $14.99 a month. Pull the sheets off your sexual health with Everly Well. No questions asked, just clear answers. For 20% off an Everly Well at home lab test, visit everlywell.com slash rivalry and enter code rivalry. That's everlywell.com slash rivalry, code rivalry for 20% off your test. Everly Well at home lab test. Your answers, your way. Oh my God! Um, how do you, okay? How do you normally deal with with resentments? Not not with Christianity, but like with friends. Like, well, okay, have you ever resented a friend? Like for real? Is there a friend that you have that you like yes. resented? 
Yes, I, you and I have a common friend that I resented for a really long time, and I don't know if I've stopped. <laughs> Ooh. We don't need to name names on the, on the podcast one day. We do not need to name names on our, no, our yeah, podcast. We do. We're gonna, oh, so you forgot the mantra. Say their, Say their name. name. Well, I will, we will bleep their... it, but but it's... Oh. Oh, really? Yes, I had a very big resentment against him for a very long time. Yeah. What do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean? I've told this is not a secret. I've told you this. I know, but I I've told him. It. I've told you. I've told everyone in the friend group. Wait, but do you still resent him to this day? Not really. We're just not. It's just weird because we're not really like. Fr- I mean, everyone. He's gonna know now. But anyway, whatever. We're just not friends like we used to be. Like we used to be like inseparable. You know what I mean? It was crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and we we never really reconciled um, our friendship we just kind of we just kind of moved on and like okay anyway that happened anyway uh i mean yeah um child anyway so like we Nicki minaj did like it was like big boobs what um child anyway so and we we, and we really just kind of moved on and we really just more or less just live separate lives now but but we have hung out you know we we went to had dinner a while back and we we've hung out with you um yeah and we still have, you know, obviously a lot of friends in common because our um, circles were so intertwined for a hot yeah, second. I, 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 I our so Venn diagram actively, was basically one circle. Yeah, I actively hang out with them very, pretty, very often. I know. <laughs> do you, do you, do you resent me because I'm good friends with them? I, do, I, do, I really don't resent them anymore, and I, and I actually like, like we've hung out a few times, and I've, I've enjoyed hanging out, and and. And I mean, they're so funny and really talented, and uh, just a, a great cheerleader and a really nice person, and like re- it was really great. I, I just I, mean, I think about all the, the the great memories that I had with them, and yeah. them like just being like just having so much fun and laughing and like crying and all that stuff. So you guys, you know, I, it. it's Patty. It's Patty. Yes, it's Patty. Have I ever resented Patty? Let me think. Have I ever resented Patty? No. I mean, no, that's not true. One time I was, I was mad at, I mean, I don't think I resented it, but I was, I was mad at Patty one time. It was so annoying. Why? Patty was being so, because we, we, I was sending out a group text to everyone in the group to get together. This was pre-pandemic. And I said, let's all hang out and play video games. Because me and Monet are both in town. This is very rare. So everyone came over and we all played video games. And then we were, everyone in the group plays video games except for patty okay <laughs> so we're all playing video games which we all sit in the text everyone's like yes we're gonna play so we we're playing and then at one point patty was like what are we just gonna sit here and play video games <laughs> <laughs> do you remember this jacob jacob was like patty was like are we just gonna sit here and play video games all night and we were like yes patty that was literally the entire that was the plan the whole time the whole time the plan was to just sit here and play video games and you knew this and now you're like ugh, you guys are playing video games and he was like on his phone and just looked up was like you guys gonna play video games all day whatever well, okay you, how are you gonna resent patty for that but so you 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 have invited patty i to your said home to a tiny out. slight resentment i said a tiny slight resentment i mean patty so, i love okay, patty. how are you gonna be mad about it or whatever when you are forcing patty to engage in something but because patty wants to hang out but we could have I how, think wait, how did a, i how did i force patty to do anything because it's a group text and it was right before the pandemic we were, like you just said it was a rare occurrence that we were in town so patty obviously really wanted to be there so i feel like as a friend group we could have done a better job of including patty in the activity so, patty, so let me so get this clear to... you think i forced patty to hang out with us while you we did play not video force games. patty but you said but you said it, to, but you said you that said, you sent a text message to the group inviting patty to your home to do you invited patty to, to your home to do an activity that you know that he doesn't do that's like literally that's like me being like guys me and bob in town everybody let's come over to my house and let's smoke weed and then you're like then, bob, you, 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 come. you know what i you know what i wouldn't come I've been I have been invited to hang out with people and do drugs. And you know what I do? But, I say, no, thank you. But, I will pass. But, had it been me, I would not include you. But you included Patty in the message. So he's but like, also, like, we really so, want to so, be there. So the other option is let's just not hang out with Patty. Everyone let's send a group text to everyone but Patty. The group text we have, I'm gonna send a new group text, Patty excluded, and say, Hey guys, y'all wanna hang out? And then Patty finds out we're all hanging out, and that that is shady. No, if I was doing a thing with, with smoking weed, I would not include you in the text. I would literally do another text because I know there is no way on earth you would want to hang out and do that. That 
I mean, that's that's you, you. That's how you, you. That's how you operate. What, 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 what did you? Bob, I get invited to drink and do drugs all the time. I am a drag queen, Monet. I get invited to okay, drink and do drugs about, every about, day. I almost said the person's name, um, mm-hmm. uh, the the manager. We're not talking about things like that. I was saying like your close friends. If 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 everyone in friend group smoke weed, and I would, and I know you don't. I would not even include you in that because a, I feel like that'll be. I feel like that's even rude to do. If someone okay, is sober, s- smoking and you weed is them, different. You can't be in a room with people unless they're like eating edibles or doing some vapor thing. If people are in a room smoking weed, you can't be in that room and not be high. That is a different story. Now, people have it. You, Monet Exchange, you have invited me to your home where you've been drinking. You and your friends have been drinking. You've invited me to events where people are drinking. You know I don't drink. You, Wait, you, a what? A what? You've when? invited me to, you've invited me to your, I'm on, so I've never been to your house where you cracked up with some beer and started drinking. Yes, I had that, but I, it was not like it was not like a party of everyone. I, I, but I have never invited you to a party. First of all, I never invited you to a function at my home where it's like a drinking, smoking. I have never done that. You not, I, I did house. not say smoking. Have, I never said smoking. Come, uh, yeah, dr- I, I never, never said smoking. You, I've never invited you to a party. People are just drinking at my house. Yes, you have come to my house and I have had alcohol, but I never like guys. We're having a, we're having like a kegger. Bob, you want to come over? I have never done that, and I never would. Okay, That's there's shady. a there's a difference in having a kegger if you haven't event where everyone's drinking and i'm the only i'm like usually what? the only one not event? drinking i have what been to your event? house i have Name been it. to your home money will you stop talking and let me say it i have been to your home and everyone's been drinking except me that has happened me you what? pixie jasmine rice when you were giving away jasmine all your rice does not drink when you were giving away what well, me and jasmine were drinking you were giving away your um your jewelry you you were giving away some jewelry yeah. or something and, and all y'all were cracking up in bridge money. It's not a bad thing, but y'all were all drinking, and but I was I'm sitting saying, there, and y'all were all no, drinking. No, it's not all. Maybe, first of all, Pixie, first of all, you know this. Pixie does drink. Pixie not I drink. didn't say Pixie she might. was trash. No one was trashed. You are right, adding okay. it. You're sprinkling in marijuana, trash, wasted, keggers. I never said any of that stuff. This is all words different. you just said. I've never no, said Bob. any of that. Yeah, but that's that's what I'm saying. When I was giving jewelry away, it, it was yeah, you, Jasmine Rice, Pixie, and myself. Maybe Jacob may have, may have come with you. Maybe I was drinking some wine or a beer or, or truly or something, and Pixie may have had half a jewelry. It wasn't like a party where people were. This this was a game night. We we're having a game night. A game night is different than people come to my house to give me give me giving them jewelry away, and I have a cocktail. That's not the so. Same thing. So in your opinion, I should have just done a separate text without Patty and not invite him to anything. I'm saying we know notoriously Patty has never played with video Answer games. Answer that us question. Once. Hold on. I mean, let me say let me say what I'm saying. We know Patty has never there's never been a moment. Patty has never played video games with with us ever. Patty does not enjoy that. He doesn't like that. So I think inviting Patty to a game night of video games is a little like, well, you're inviting me to something that you know I don't do. Patty has hung out with us while we play video games, so it's not like we, Patty's never been around while we play video games. he always bitches. He always so bitches the, and complains. So the answer to the question is, you think I should have made a completely separate group text without Patty, and even though on this rare case while in town, we should have just had a separate group text and not invited Patty. Is that what you're saying? Sh- sure. If you were going to build resentment that he got an attitude, yes. Okay, you're really you're you, really lingering on resentment. It was like, uh, this is annoying that Patty's doing that. I keep saying it was a <laughs> tiny... I, asked, I, asked, I keep saying it was a that. tiny little moment i'm not mad at patty <laughs> but i was like wow that is a weird thing to do me and patty are not fighting we're not enemies i i'm gonna reiterate because you like to sprinkle in stuff i do i'm not mad at. i just remember thinking to myself you knew this was a video game thing it was in the text you agreed to come you said you hang out and then as soon as you up, he was like Ugh, why are we playing video games and somehow well, you made it that i'm the rude one I'm gay. Well, you, well, we're I'm talking sure. about resi- I'm we're, destroyed. We're, we're talking about resentments and grudges, and you felt some type of way enough to bring it up. So obviously, there's some type of feeling that you felt. Then I'm just saying to 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 avoid those feelings, just not even have them come, so you don't ever. Have I'm just to gagged have. that you think I've done something rude. That is so crazy. <laughs> that, that is such a. That is you have turned this into like Bob did something to Patty. That is so wild. You're like it's rude to even invite him. <laughs> So what? So what did you say then? Tell me. What you, I won't interrupt. Tell me what you said while I grab my water. I said it nineteen times. I was saying if this action that Patty did and call, caused you to bring it up in our not resent- that not not that what you said about me forcing Patty and making him bibbity bop no, I'll, I'll give you my whole point. So you, so so I'm very clear. I'm saying if this action if invite if in a, in the, if this action that Patty exhibit these this behavior Patty exhibited on the on that day caused you to bring him up bring him up on the resentment and grudges episode, I would say maybe just not even um, having come so you don't ever have to have those feelings. That's, that's, that, that's what I'm saying. 
If only I would have had the foresight to know that Patty was going to be annoyed and that we we're going to have a resentment and grudges episode two years down the line. Sure, Monet. Well, if Patty only I had time. that foresight. Every time Patty happens to be, to, we're all hanging out and we end up playing games at the end. Patty is always rolling his eyes on his phone, scoffing like, "Ugh, we this is this is constant behavior of Patty's." Well, I, I'm just in, I'm just intrigued that you're like it's a it's a Bob thing. Bob, I'm just so weird intrigued at how you <laughs> twisted that into me doing something nefarious and shady. That is wild to me. How long can you hold a grudge, Roberta? I don't typically really hold grudges. I'm trying to think about someone I've had a grudge. Is it a sober thing? I think I've, I hear a lot of sober people say that. Because when you, because when you, correct me if I'm wrong, when you become sober, like part of the steps or part of the tenets is that you like, you like face your grudges or you, or you like reconcile any of those like feelings, right? No, that's, that's not one of the steps, no. Oh. Well, isn't there something like that or something akin to something similar to that? I mean, they they talk. We talk about grudges and resentments a lot in um, the program, but it's not one of the steps. No, um, work. And I mean, I, I would say, if, honestly, if I have a one, I have one person in my life that I've really held a grudge on with for a very long time, and it's my father. Besides Frank Pridgey, I don't really have a lot of grudges, to be honest. Work. Outside, I of that, I'm trying grudges. to think about anyone that I'm like really like. Like, I mean, I I I, I don't. I will say that I don't like. Sometimes I don't fuck with people, but it's but th- I think everyone that's everyone. Everyone doesn't. I, I don't believe in give. I, I'm like my mother believes in giving everyone one thousand opportunities. You you do me, no. do me wrong and then 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 do me wrong no. and then do me wrong and then do. That's my mom. I don't believe in that, but Same. I don't. I don't personally align that with a grudge. I I align that with like okay, now I just know more about you. Yeah. Yeah, um, I got whole grudge is pretty long. Well, not a grudge. Like, is is that Taylor thing? Like, if you did me wrong, I'm like, I will never forget that action that you did to me. We can like, we can be friends afterwards, and we can be cordial and whatever. But I'll never forget that behavior that you did because if you did it once, you you can do it again. But can you forgive them? Forgive them? Yeah, I can. I can. I can forgive them, but I will never forget that action. Can you forgive anybody? Can I forgive anybody? Yeah, can you forgive the I guy mean, that scammed you? Can you forgive the guy that scammed you? And um, no, and no, no, because that is that is that is a pattern of behavior that he's been doing for a literal uh, for probably almost a decade now. And so that, that 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 is in his nature. He is a he is an evil person. Work has um Tislarm ever talked about? Do you talk about with Tislarm? We talk, we we like we like laugh about it now. Uh, we, we should we should you should tell them what we're talking about. The people people who don't know. Yeah, so I, I probably talk, I have talked about him on the podcast before, but when I was up and coming in New York City, this like scammer guy, he like saw me out in the street and he invited me to lunch. He ended up like he and t- my friend Tizam, who is who has danced for Bob and I on our civil rivalry tour, y'all and y'all see me post him a lot. Very beautiful, tall black man. He's so sexy. Ugh. Um. Anyway, so he like scammed us into having he like we had lunch with him and he ordered he like ran up this huge tab like he's like drinking ordering all this food and he just dips out on the on on the check and then sits on my and and I end up being arrested for it because they think that we're trying to like scam the restaurant to call us niggas all kind of crazy shit. Come to find out, he has been doing this to like people all over Hell's Kitchen, up in Washington Heights, um, all over the place. Like it's like he's a mess. And you don't think you ever give him, even if he like changed? Um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't fuck that nigga. I don't know him. I, I mean, you don't know if he might. Maybe he'll cross your life one day. I, I don't think you. I don't. You think? I, I, also, just be, just for the record, I don't think that forgiveness is um, something that people have to do. <laughs> I don't think everyone does, deserves forgiveness. I don't think everyone has to forgive people. I don't believe in that. Um, mm-hmm. I do think that forgiveness is good for you, and I yeah. do think that. What is this cat doing? Bob, continue. She is just. She, I'm listening to you. <laughs> why are you so? Why are you so? You know what? Let's why, actually let's talk about grudges. This is the grudge I need to talk about. Me and Colleen. <laughs> why are you so? Why you get so bothered by Colleen? I'm very. And you, you have these weird emotions. Like you'll be fine for a couple weeks, and one day you're like, "What the fuck is wrong with this fucking hair? A kind of hairless bitch. What the fuck is wrong with it? Like, what is this deal? What is going on with you and Colleen? What is the problem? Okay, two things. One, you know I don't like cats. So you've known this but about me since before you ever got this cat. Record, like I, that you like Colleen. You have said that on on this podcast for sure. Hey, well, Co- Co- watch, as Colleen as Colleen grows up, she's changing, and my, <laughs> as she changes, my opinion changes. Oh my god, you you spent to quote I don't know who you spin my head right round right round. I just I am it's Pitbull. 
No, it's not Pitbull. Boy. Isn't you spin my head right? Mr. Worldwide, he has a version of it. And uh, Mr. Worldwide, he... Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, he does it in a song. Um, um. Yeah, what is this? What is this resentment towards Colleen? Why do you resent Colleen? Okay, she... Okay, first of all, she does stuff like uh, claw at me, which I don't care for particularly. She <laughs> grabs my clothes. She has scratched me several times. <laughs> she Several? More... You know what? More than two means several. She has scratched me enough times that I am not comfortable. I, I would say, I'll put you this way. Colleen has scratched me more times than I've scratched you. And I've known you for almost nine years. Okay? But she How about that? You, you give me s- several black and blues. I, I, I feel like I'm fucking Tina Turner with this motherfucker. <laughs> and then she also, like, we're just recording and she's, like, eating fucking tissue and, like, pulling at the cords. And, like, I'm like, this cat is driving me crazy. And well, I, maybe you can, you and Colleen can um, address some of these grudges. You know, since becoming a cat parent, I definitely was not aware of the tests and trials that I'll be going through. Right now, Miss Colleen has this habit of wanting to wake me up at literally five, around five fifteen every morning, walking on my head, uh, 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 starting to lick my face, do all the things to eat at that time. I'm like, girl, ain't nobody eating at five fifteen in the morning, and she won't stop until she gets fed. And so I gotta get my behind up and go feed her. That is love. But love is also keeping tabs on your cat's health because nothing is more important than their health and well-being, guys. And that's why I use Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter is the most advanced litter ever. It changes colors to help detect early signs of potential illnesses, including urinary tract infections and kidney issues. Cats are notorious for hiding illnesses, like Bob, and it's important to catch health issues as soon as possible. Like Bob, oh my God, is Bob a cat? Litter box cleanup is easier as well with Pretty Litter. It's ultra-absorbing crystals trap order instantly and lasts up to a month. Plus, Pretty Litter is safer for your cat and for the whole household. Many conventional litters contain irritants that can aggravate allergies and asthma, but Pretty Litter's super light crystal base minimizes mess and dust. And Pretty Litter arrives safely at your door in a small lightweight bag. Shipping is free and you never have to worry about storing a big old container of litter and taking it, uh, dragging it from the shopping cart to the car, up the stairs to the gr- girl, too much. It's just too much. It comes to your house fierce and fabulous. Love is putting your cat's health first with Pretty Litter. Do what I did and make the switch today by using prettylitter.com and use code RIVALRY for 20% off your first order. That's prettylitter.com, promo code RIVALRY for 20% off. Prettylitter.com, promo code RIVALRY. I know a lot of people need coffee to get through the day, but baby, not anymore. Everyone's new favorite coffee replacement is True Niagen. True Niagen fuels the body with energy, they help maintain cellular metabolism, and they even support heart health. Folks be having more energy, baby, and they don't need those extra cups of coffee since they started taking it. With 11 published human clinical studies and backed by Nobel Prize winners, True Niagen is a supplement that's clinically proven to boost NAD levels, an essential co enzyme required for cellular energy and repair. Since taking True Niagen, lots of folks out here are reporting resiliency. It's helping their muscles recover after workouts. True Niagen is doing the thing, girl, through and through. Even my boo is out here saying that he had more zest for life and, you know, just adds vitality to your everyday life with True Niagen. Right now, new customers can save 10% on their first purchase by going to trueniagen.com slash rivalry. That's T-R-U N-I-A-G-E-N dot com slash rivalry to save 10% off your first purchase. TrueNiagen.com slash rivalry. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, and this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Have you ever seen the movie The Grudge? I have seen The Grudge, and it's pretty good. It wasn't good. I, like, I, it, I was in high school, I think, when it came out, and I remember, like, Kind of what it was about. I know it's a girl on the TV with long hair, but I don't remember what ended up there's, happening. There's a tape, and if you watch the tape, you'll die in seven days. Right. And how do you die? The girl comes out from the thing and, like, kills you? Uh, you know, you just end up just, like, die. like the girl comes out and she, like, looks at you, basically, or it comes near you. It doesn't show what she does to you. But you just end up with your face, like, like open and, like, and like wet. And you end up wet with, like, a crazy face. Um and there's this guy trying to like break the curse so he doesn't die in seven days. No, it's a um, woman. I know, I know it's a woman. Oh, is it a woman? That's probably true. I, I haven't seen it in a long time. 
Oh, am I? Oh, I am confusing the Grinch with the Ring. <laughs> because there was a girl. Because there was. Because there was a, a, a girl with long hair in both movies, right? What I'm, I'm noticing something that these that why are they making women be these like evil sirens that come and kill people? Why is it women? Why could it be some dude that was coming out the TV? I think it's. I think it's. I think there's a lot of men who kill people in movies. <laughs> in movies, Freddie, mm. Jason, Mike Myers. Mm. I mean, um, how, how, how many more women can you name that kill that are the scary people in movies? Besides the ring and the grudge. Wait, hold on. Oh, the girl from the grudge here to get money. As soon as I was talking about scary shit, I'm like, scary shit happened in my house. I heard, so Colleen tries to get into the bathtub, so she's like trying to thing on the glass door, but it's not like someone was jiggling my front door, like downstairs. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. So you have a gr- grudge against Colleen for scaring <laughs> What I my my favorite thing about the grudge is that they parodied it in Scary Movie Three. Remember when, I, when the girl comes out the TV and Brenda f- fights her? That's the ring. Is that the ring? Now, now I don't think I remember the grudge. <laughs> I've seen it, but I don't remember it. I know it's a girl with long hair. The, the grudge is the she's the uh, the Asian girl with long hair, right? Uh, she's the one. What what the fuck did Yuha do on season ten? Was that the grudge or the ring? Bitch, I don't know anymore. I'm so confused. <laughs> I'm so... I think she was the grudge. Our producer, Jacob, is watching a scramble. He's like, they'll get it. <laughs> Jacob is like, I'm not helping you hoes a little bit, even a little bit. Oh, Jacob yeah. just oh looking at no. Us. The grudge is the Asian girl who comes out... The, yeah, she's the... Yeah, Yuha did the grudge. She is like the... Like, she's like the Asian girl with the long hair. Long, yeah, yeah, yes girl and it came out in 2004 oh my god that means i was 14 which means i was in eighth grade ninth grade wow i graduated high school I, that was the year i started college oh damn you all nigga damn have you seen that video of a uh, of um of kevin hart interviewing someone and he goes i'm 56 he goes damn i'm sorry <laughs> yeah, i'm sorry about that Kevin Hart, he's <laughs> funny. He is funny. Uh, okay, if someone has wronged you, what's the best way for them to take to make amends with you? You better you better read that question as if you're reading. Not, don't even make it sound natural. You better read it. If someone has wronged you, what is the best way for <laughs> them to that. make amends? Also, we're not. At, I, I, I don't know what you're doing. Are we hiding from the listeners that we have prompts? I don't think that it's not I, about I never hiding, do that. Monet. It's not about hi- money. You always act like something is hiding. I remember one time you you were joking that gluing your wig down was faking it one day. You were <laughs> so you are so wild. It's about making it flow into the conversation. So I would be like. I think it's flowed. No, no, you. Were, if somebody has wronged you, you, what was the you, best way you for them to make of it? Too extreme. You make everything so extreme. You know that's not how we're ready. You are so fucking Wait, extra. Monet, I, I have to. I have to go back and watch that video of you doing your book report about. <laughs> First of all, that's how much you don't even listen to the podcast, Tamar. We didn't have videos back then. That's when we was being crazy, and we didn't have no video. <sighs> I have to go back and listen. It was, I, it was so good. You, you were really. That was. I remember, like, cr- I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, what's oh, the way to make so amends funny. with you? It, it depends on what it is. You have to give me an example of something someone's done. I can say how to make amends on it. Okay, let's say I come to your house. You're out of town. You and Jacob are out of town, and I ask you to stay at your place. You're like, you know what, money? You come to town. You, you can stay at my place. But mm-hmm. I, when I, but when I leave, I leave your place like a mess. Like I don't. Like, it's just a mess. I did not leave it how you left it, and it's just it's really not cool. And I don't acknowledge it. I don't tell you anything. And when you tell me, I'm like, no, I did it. And it, whatever. Because of that interaction, we don't, we're not, yeah. we're not as tight of friends anymore. Because, because it, it really upset you that I didn't, that I fucked up your place and I didn't apologize. I didn't fix it. Nothing. I think if you fucked up my place, it wouldn't, it wouldn't upset me so much. If you fucked it up, but if you, if you, I would ask for you to apologize for doing it. I would ask you to fix it in a timely manner. Like, I didn't do anything wrong. What do you mean? I, 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 it was. I left it how I had it. This is how it, it was when I came here. Then, it, then it sounds like me and you might not be able to make amends if you can't see the, <laughs> if you can't see that what you did was wrong, and I'm telling you wh- why it was wrong and what you should do to make it wrong. And you're like, I don't see that. I think we're done. We can't make. If you can't Damn, see why, the friendship is over. If you cannot see why that's wrong, then we can't make amends. If you're just like, I didn't do anything. But I didn't do anything. What do you mean? Well, show me. Show, do you have, do you, is there any, like, how, how did you okay, leave so, it then? Okay, so I'll say this. Did you notice that when you came here, the refrigerator was working? 
it was like it, was, it worked. It was it was it wasn't as cold. It was not very cold. So I I, I don't know if it was working or not. But your your refrigerator okay. was not cold. And also the curtains in the content room have been they're they're not up. They're down, and one of the boards is broken, and a few of the clips are missing. Well, when so in my defense, when I pulled it, it just came down. I so I think it was done. It wasn't hung properly. So yes, it's but kind you of my pulled fault. it. Yeah. It's, yes, it's kind of my fault. But if you would have put it like properly, you let me. You told me I could use your your content room. So the fact that you didn't install it properly, how? Yes, I may have. It may have fallen out under my watch. But it's okay. kind of you contributed to it. So my question is: So you don't see anything wrong with my, with breaking? You left my fridge open, which I think, like, I don't. I'm not a technician, but I think it, like the Freon is empty or something. Some it was overworking, and the fridge is no longer cooling off my food. And the curtains, one of these curtains is just completely pulled down and broken. And the guest bathroom, the one in the middle, the half bath, uh-huh. the toilet doesn't flush anymore. And you don't see anything wrong with any of this. Well, first of all, the toilet is black, so I can't even verify that there was water in the fucking toilet when I got here. So let's okay. talk about that. All right. Well, you you can see the water, and but let me phrase that: I can see the water. Maybe you're, I mean, which is weird because I wear glasses, and I know you have twenty twenty vision. So I'm assuming that if I can see it, yeah. you can see oh, yeah, it, girl. Uh, but if you can't see that those things are a problem, then I I, I guess we're gonna have to um, figure out how to uh, reconcile this in the future. Because if you if you don't see it as anything wrong, and you're not willing to make any amends, you're not willing to get my toilet fixed, get me a new fridge, or get my fridge fixed, and get my curtains fixed in the timely manner, we're going to have a problem. Well, let me tell you, I know Bob. Bob would be so hot. Bob would be so hot that I would not acknowledge those things. I'm like, Monet, you came, bitch, you came to my house, and the thing was there. Monet, you, you, Bob, that Monet, would be you. you have only you- seen me scream at, like, two people as long as I've known you. Like in the almost Bob, nine okay, years of friendship, that was not screaming. That was not screaming. That was not screaming. That was raising your voice. And Bob, you talk. Bob, I I don't think you realize how often you speak passionately. When you speak, Jacob, am I crazy? When you speak passionately, Bob, you I, speak, hi, I, you, I, I know you, that I speak passionately. You, oh, you're, and you slap your hand in your fist. You slap your hand in your fist, and you're like. Bitch, what day? Monet, Monet, the curtain was I, down, Monet. I know that I speak passionately. You don't have to convince me. I'm on your team. I know I speak passionately. I believe you. I you, you do not have to convince me at all. I'm a very passionate person. But I'm not like, yelling at you. So, yes, I'm not... You you raise your, I mean you have you have raised your voice and what I'm doing is what you've done on this podcast where you speak very loudly and passionately and you want to sink that point in. And I think you would do that because you would be so flabbergasted that I would not admit what I did wrong to your home. Yeah, I mean, if, if it came to like property damage, I think that we would really have to. I would have to really take a step back and evaluate um, our friendship. For example, here's an here's a great example. Uh, I got my car wrapped. My car is now black. It used to be mm-hmm. white. It is now black. And I let Ezra borrow my car, and he scratched it. There's like a little scratch in the back. And I was like. Hey babe, my car like I lent you the car and it's and it's scratched now. And then Ezra was like, I apologize. I will figure out how to pay for that. And I said, Thank you. That was all I wanted. I didn't I, I did not make Ezra, I didn't I didn't like want him to pay for it. I just wanted to know that he was like, I, it happened in my care. I mm-hmm. accept that and I will get it taken care of. Turns out the guy who who, who wrapped the car for me was like, I'll, I'll I'll just fix it. It's great. I don't worry. Um he he likes me as as, as a customer. Um, so it didn't, it didn't even come to that, but knowing that he was willing to pay for it, that was, that was amends enough for me. Got it. How about you? Well, let's say I come to your house uh-huh. and you ask me to, uh, stay at your house for a week and you come back, Colleen's dead. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I'm covered in blood. <laughs> You come home and I'm covered in blood. What do we do now? I am calling the police. I don't even think you can call the police for animals. I'm calling the police on you. Did you even ask me how it happened? Did you even take a second to ask me what happened? No. Well, the police can help us figure it out together. I think you need to. You don't. You're not going to give me the the grace and the dignity to ask me what happened. The fact that I'm coming home after a week and you're covered in blood. And I, why you don't you just, not, why don't you ask me right now no, what happened? You have not the fact that you did not call me and text me immediately 
it's already a red flag. So you know when what? I'm I want, covered I, in I'm covered in blood, meaning this clearly just happened. It, it didn't happen two days ago, and I sat around your house in blood. You are walking in the door, and I am covered okay, in you blood. Didn't say that. You didn't say that. I thought that I it just happened. said you thought I was you thought I was just hanging out in blood, just like yeah. I thought you. I thought you. In my mind, you had a psychotic break, and you were just sitting on my couch covered in Colleen's blood and her car. So why don't you ask me what happened? Why don't you ask me? What happened? Okay, so you know how you told me to let Colleen go on the porch sometime, right? Colleen was walking on the little balcony that she walks on, and she fell off. When she fell to the bottom, she got into a fight with a bobcat. And actually, there was a bobcat in the neighborhood. So I run downstairs with the Roomba, because it was the only thing I could grab, and I'm, I am fighting the bobcat. Me and Colleen are both fighting this bobcat together. And then I get Colleen in the house. We beat the thing off. I throw it into the dumpster and close the lid. And me and Colleen, I grab Colleen. We're running. She is meowing everywhere. There's blood all over the place. I close the door behind me. And me and Colleen are both like panting. And then Colleen looks at me. She starts foaming at the mouth because she has rabies. Because bobcats carry rabies. Colleen is now attacking me. Like she will not. So I am trying everything in my power to get her off of me. She will not stop attacking me. I have now wrapped her in a blanket to, so she will stop scratching me and i don't know if she succumbed to the attacks from the bobcat or if she suffocated but in the midst of all that she died and then you walked to the front door you're calling the cops i'm calling Why? the cops i'm calling the cops because i can't believe that you let her fall off the balcony so i feel like you need to take some ownership of that you told me to let her go to the balcony you said let her go out there she likes well, going on the balcony and all the time she's gone out on the balcony when I'm there, she had never fallen off. So what did you do to have her fall off the balcony this time? What do you think? I pushed her or something? She just slipped. I mean, you have resentment towards her. You have been very... There is documented proof of how nasty you have been to Colleen on this podcast, in lives, on the Patreon. So, and to me, there is something fishy going on, and I don't believe you. I feel like you have done something to have Colleen be dead in this current I moment. Think, so I, I, think Colleen ha I think Colleen also has a sponsorship with Truly. She had a couple little sips sip when she got out there, <laughs> hopped up on the thing, was a little tipsy, and slipped over and fell. I've also shown very several times in the podcast that I like Colleen, that I love oh, her, no, I called oh, her my you niece. Like her. I like, said it like before. you said, you grow and change. You, you, you. As, as Colleen's gotten older, the, the 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 resentment has 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 been on a steady incline of her. So I think you she's, you chose this moment so that you, so that you would never have to deal with Colleen ever again. Well, you chose a weak moment when I was gone to get to to get her dead, and I want the cops involved because if you did, if I if there is ocular proof that you had Colleen, you that you hired a fucking bobcat hit cat to fucking kill my cat. <laughs> I want you to be persecuted on the, by well, the fullest extent of the law. Period. Well, I am I am completely comfortable with you calling the cops. I know that you have I know that you have cameras in your home. You will see that uh -huh. I have not done anything to Colleen. I you can check my text. I have there is no text between me and any cats. I don't fuck with cats in general. I would have hired a dog first of all. Okay, not a cat. Mm. So, mm. Well, but how can I make amends to you now? What 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 are my amends? <sighs> My, I don't even know what my men's would be. I would be so distraught. I would be. I, I don't know. I don't know if getting you. Cat, I put my life on the line to fight this bobcat for Colleen. Your life. It's a bobcat. It's maybe a little bigger than a fucking Pomeranian. You'll be fine. Bobcats have rabies. And so do you. Yeah, but maybe, maybe now, because I fought your fucking. I fought for your for Colleen's life. I don't know what the men's would be. I'm like you. I don't know. Getting a new cat seems like so crazy. Like, oh, one dies, get a new one. I don't want a new cat. I don't want your money. And I, I genuinely don't know how you can make amends to me. I don't know. How you thought so I can make amends to me? I'm, I'm getting really mad even thinking about it because I feel. How like you gonna make is... amends to me? I, I now am no, probably. I owe you amends. What well, you called the cops on me? I fought from. I fought. I risked my life to fight for your cat. Your cat started attacking me. All this stuff, and, and I, I I was doing a favor for you, watching your little cat. I find your it little, very your, funny. Your, 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 your hairless cat. Your how hairless I cat. Up, how I have to end up uh, making amends to Bob. Like, I'm the victim here, but now I have to make amends to you. Your cat, attack, your cat attacked me. Because you let her get rabies and get crazy. So should I have not let her go on the porch or what? Should I let her go on the porch or not? You shouldn't have. And I didn't ask you. But you ask told you me. You said. With you me. Said, with me. I didn't ask you to do that. 
Now you said let Colleen go on the porch. You said she likes going out there. Let her go outside on the porch. I no, I never said that in my in my in my house instructions. I never said that. I said Colleen goes on the porch. Yes, I you never did. Said you said out loud, feed her this at this time, change her litter box at this time, and let her go out on the porch and get sun. You said those words. So now what are you gonna do? I think you misinterpreted what I said. Well, you are you, you remember that conversation we had about improving earlier? Get, she's back in the house. Like, <laughs> well, but, well, I flipped it. I flipped. I flipped it. I didn't say that because then you were like, "No, yes, you did." I'm like, "Well, now, 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 I gotta go with it." <laughs> well, you had to go with the first time I said it. As soon as you introduce it, it is now a fact in the but world. It's always, it's always yes and or no but. I was like, no but. Da, 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 da. No, there's, no, like, there's no. no no but. There's no no but. It's always yes and. There's no, no there but is, is a not no a no but. No but is the opposite of yes and. No but is the worst thing to do in improv. In improv, no but is now, literally the worst thing you can do. Okay, let's play it again. Let's say, let's say you said call, call say, your call your friend call your friend Cecily Strong. She'll tell you. She'll say she'll say no but is literally the worst thing to do in improv. No, say say what you said. Let me let me show you how, how no but will work. Go ahead about the. Go okay. Y- yes, you you told me to let her. You said feed her at this time. You said change her litter box this often and let her go out on the porch and get sun. No, but you're not supposed to do it on Mondays. You did it on Mondays. Mondays is when the bobcat comes out. So if you really listen intently, I said not on Mondays, and that was the Mondays is, is the day you did it. Monet, you can't no but no but is the it opposite was. of yes and no it Monet. In the rules of improv, no but is the death of a scene. No. Here, here's what here's what you can do. You, you know, but it's, look at you. Try it on me. Try, I'm, I am now Monet. You're you're Bob. I'm gonna tell you how to how to yes and the situation. You ready? Uh, in the instructions, you said she can go out. You said feed her, clothe her, and put her on on, on the patio. Yes, and I didn't say she could fall off the patio. You should still be watching her. I did not say let her go on the patio and then wander to the next room and read a book. You, I asked you to watch my cat. Which means literally be in the house and watch the cat. That's the yes and. Well, well y- y'all can comment below. Does y'all can comment below if if the no but worked or uh, and yes the yes and worked, but I think the no but works as well. Y'all can comment below. Do y'all think the no but worked in this situation? Yes or <laughs> no. no, bitch. No but does not work in it. You are so wild. Who who's who is someone that you forgave who really did you dirty? Like someone who you, you can remember forgiving someone who you were like, this. Because let me tell you right now. So I don't know if you ever heard this has heard this expression. Resentment is like drinking poison and hoping someone else dies. Resentment a, is like drinking poison, drinking poison and hoping someone mm. else dies, because resentment it really is bad for you. I can say honestly, and earnestly, my resentment for my father is not good for me. It is. It is. It is that it has caused me nothing but hurt and pain my whole life. Well, how I do you heal wish, from that? I do not have the answer to that question. I wish I could just be really chill about it. And the way my mom is, I wish I could just be like, that's just Frank. That's just Frank. Do you but think I don't... meeting him and having a conversation would help a lot of that? Because of the patterns that he's exhibited in my life, I don't think that he's capable of. The thing, here's the thing. It also involves drugs and alcohol. So, like, when yeah. I've, I've also I've never seen my father drunk or high. I've never seen my father have a take a sip of anything in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but when he is in that state, he's just a different person because of yeah. because of how like he doesn't call me, he doesn't reach out to me, he or he will call with like a scam. He tried he he'll my my father tried to scam me probably like three or four times. He's successfully done it a few times, and. Yeah. And tried to scam me probably like three or four times in my life, like r- literally run a scam on me. Crazy. So I I don't think that my father can make amends to me. Maybe if he, maybe if he can facilitate me meeting my little brother who I've never met before. Mm-hmm. If he can start to be there for Caleb and like be a part of his life mm-hmm. and right all of the wrongs that he did not do with me. Um, so like almost like you'll be getting amends by you see him actively trying to make your sibling's life better the way that he wasn't there for you. Yes, if if my if my father can make things better for Caleb, then I will start to believe that he's doing like doing it for real. I mean, Caleb right. is now. Oh my God, how old is Caleb? Jesus Christ, I don't even know how old he is. I was twenty one when he was born. I am thirty five now. Ooh. So that means he's fourteen. One, yeah, fourteen. No, 
24. No, yeah, 14, 14, 14. Um, so, and, and the thing is, like, he's about to be, gr- in three years, my little brother will be grown. It is so crazy. That, and I keep counting down the days to, like, when I get to meet my brother. So I'm going to have to wait until he's grown because his mother doesn't want me to meet him. Yeah. Because she's afraid that I'm going to somehow connect him with my father. Like, she thinks that me and Frank are, like, kicking it and, like, <laughs> it's your boy Bob and Frank kicking it in. Thinking, no. Yeah. So, because she's, she's, and I don't even know, like, the fact that this woman is this afraid of my father, I don't even know what the fuck he was up to. Right. She I, does I was just about not. To say, I was like, she probably has some experiences where she's, like, she's genuinely probably terrified that you would do that and it'll fuck up her kid. And I don't know my father to be a violent or a dangerous person. I know him to be shady. But yeah. he did allude to me one time that he had done something dangerous, and like to her, to someone else, and and wow. which is why he went to prison the last time. Or I don't even know what was the last. Time. I don't. Know. He might be in prison right now for all I fucking know. Um, but that is why um, I. Oh my God, I, are you crying? I, no, I just saw this powder puff, and I was like, I wanted to try to put it in the corner of my eye. Because it seems good for corners, but I can see why. Like I was crying, I can see that. Um, no, I mean, but I think that if I, <laughs> I think that if right. if Frank were making amends toward Caleb and was able to facilitate and help us meet each other, mm-hmm. that would that would that would that would prove it to me. Yeah. Um. I, I honestly, I can't think of I, I can't think off the top of my head who I resent. I don't. I, I well, don't. I mean, speaking of parents, you don't resent nobody. I mean, June. But again, I, I, and maybe it's just like I'm like fucked up. But I generally don't even think about her. I, like when I hear her name, I'm not like. You like I, what the uh, month? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not like okay. I'm like she literally is a non factor to my in my life. So she doesn't like she doesn't try to talk to me or call me. So I'm cool. Like I'm like okay, girl, whatever. I don't care about you. I would I would love to be there. I would love to be like, child, whatever. Honey. Girl, I am that she is that is not where I am at at all. I am like annoyed thinking about my dad out there just like if if I know he's smiling, it annoys the shit out of me. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck you got to smile about? <laughs> Why the well, fuck are you smiling? Token because June has another kid. The kid is like three years old or four or four years old now. And she's like apparently being a really good mother to him, so good for him and her. But my young, I, I you know, I have, I have a younger brother, Marley, who is like he's like in and out of jail because of his fucked up parents, because of her and his dad. He's like you never he's told, in like. How have you never told me this? Really? You've never told me this. I know about your he, brother who works for the system, and I know about not the system. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> But I didn't know about this though. Yeah, Marley, and he's like in and out of in and out of prison in Milwaukee because his parents are fucked up. That's like you know, and I, I'm just so grateful that I I got an escape and I was able to you know not fall down that path because of fucked up parents. But yeah, he's like she like really she like really fucked him up. So I feel more more as so I feel bad for him. I'm like fuck, dude, and I don't know what how to help, yeah. and it's like a whole thing. I mean, it's, when it's not really your job to help, but I can understand why you want to because you're like, damn, like yeah. I, I feel responsible in some capacity, but also that's not it's not your duty to help. Like that's that's the yeah. job of parents, and you're not a parent. I mean, you got this badass cat that you like act like an asshole, but besides that, you're not a parent. Um, do you have do, do you do you at all resent white people at all? Even oh, like yeah, for you. Sure. Yes, and like, and, and, and when I say white people, it's like it, it, it's not about individual. White, it's white people as an institution, right? Right, for sure. Like something it's when I whiteness. See, like it's just like yeah, like to see so when, something when I see like whiteness flourish because I realize the reason why whiteness is able to be what it is today and flourish how it is, it is it is at the detriment of every other uh, 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 being. You know what I mean? It's like it's be, they, the reason they, there's, there was this whole thing. I saw it on Twitter. I don't know how true it is, uh, but it's like this like uh, these folks are like we need to steal 
our things back from the UK. Like we need to go to these motherfucking museums and all these artifacts <laughs> that they stole from our from the from from Asia, Africa, India, whatever it is. We want we want our stuff back. And then it's like this whole thing. They're like, well, you can't have it back. He's like, well, you stole it. So why can't so why so you stole it from us? And now we know that you stole it. Everyone is aware, and we all agree that you stole our shit. But now we can't take it back. So like stuff like that drives me. It's insane. because it's because they have more power and they have weapons yeah. and guns and 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 lawyers and this and that to 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 crumble us and you know like for example when i see a bunch of white people together just laughing I'm like, what the fuck y'all niggas laughing about <laughs> i'm like what the fuck are y'all laughing about i i hate seeing groups of white people laughing i don't know what they're laughing about but it it feels like it's shady i'm like stop fucking laughing yeah stop honestly, laughing right the and- fuck now and if I'm being really honest, like anytime I've dated someone outside of my race, I've always been weird because I'm like, I always like in my in uh, what I thought, you know, was that I would when I was like young, young, I would like marry like a black person and like I want to have that experience. And then anytime I would date someone who was not black, I'm like, I'm not betraying my race, but I'm like, what am I like? What am I saying with this? Like, and again, love is love, right? You don't you don't choose who you love. It happens that you date. Blah blah. I was like. I always felt weird dating outside my race. I was like, I want to show a beautiful blackness. And when I'm not doing that, I feel like I'm like, you know, I don't know. It's something I, still I mean, think I, about. I feel like my existence is showing beautiful blackness and I don't have to show my beautiful blackness by dating a black person. That is not like, I, I don't think that dating a white person diminishes my blackness in any shape, form or fact. There is no one in this, on this planet who can diminish my blackness? It's literally not possible. Oh yeah, for you know sure. I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's also growing up, like in my in, in my in my it's like how we grew up in my community and in the Caribbean, and it's just like something that was a big, not a big part, but it's something that was definitely talked about a lot. Like something like I when when everyone thought I was straight and whatever, middle school, high school, whatever. They're like, if she can't use your did did did, 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 yo, did they did they say this in the south? I know, if, of course, I know the saying. If she can't, use, if she can't use your com, if she can't use your com, you can't bring her home. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So it's something that they used to say to me all the time. So I was so self conscious about thinking people who were not black were even attractive because I was like, oh, well, I will say this: the saying, if you can't, if she can't use your com, you can't bring her home, is is extremely problematic. Oh, of we course. do not talk. We do not talk about it enough in the black community. That is really problematic and i and i think that um the notion of insinuating that interracial couples are a problem is really detrimental especially to people who are mixed race who are the products of um mm-hmm. parents who are different races for sure but you know, you know what I mean? all things kind of like religion these are things that we grew up with and uh, we've had to con- well i've had to let me not we speak for us but i've had to but I actually think about it all the time because it, it's like they thump it into you and they like from the time you're fucking this big, Colleen size. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, we should, we could, we should, we could do a whole episode about interracial dating. Um, oh, for I've, sure. I've, I mean, I, I have, as you I know, think, I, I think dated. we should have, we should have an interracial couple. <laughs> Maybe we will. I know, I know a guy. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, as you know, as you know, I've only ever dated two people in my life. I've dated. Jacob and Ezra, and I have a, a, a boyfriend who's white and a boyfriend who's Mexican, and um, or brown. Mexican is not a race, but he's he's just a, a brown person. Um, <clears throat> and I have, I, and I, and I, tr- those. I mean, I don't have any experience outside outside of that. So I don't. I except except for I I did have girlfriends when I was very young, and all my girlfriends were black, um, but. I, I do think I was really young and those relationships were just, it wasn't like, it, I, me and Keisha were not like you and the guy who were it was slaying Keisha, a, slaying. Latanya and Nikki and Rover and Kutcher. It was, it was uh, Keisha and, and what was her name? <laughs> T, 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 Tiana? Tiani. No, oh my God, her name was Tamala. Keisha and T, Tisha. Tisha. It was Keisha and Tisha. Um, But, me and me and Keisha or Tisha were not like uh, you and the guy who was slinging rocks and giving out rings. Y'all were on some college level shit when you were in middle school. That is crazy to me. <laughs> and I Y'all think, were doing you know, some notebook shit in middle school. That no, was ma'am. like my first. That was like my first relationship. We weren't calling it a relationship, but it was in not that was like my first relationship, and it was like 
But, you know, and, and coincidentally, Bob, it was around the time I started reading, reading the fucking coldest winter ever. So I thought that that's what relationships were had to be. Was he, um, was, was he, uh, was he black? Yeah. And were you in love? I was, I was 12. I don't, I didn't know what love was, but if you asked me then, I would probably say yes. Interesting. But now looking back, absolutely not. That's, I mean, I, I, I was also not in love, um, with, uh, Keisha or Tisha. Um, but I was, I was, I was in high school. Well, me and, me and Keisha were also in college as well. But maybe that, maybe that's be on our next topic, interracial dating. I'm that's gonna that's gonna about. that's gonna light the internet up, girl. <laughs> I think I think for guests we could, we could have Trixie and, and her partner D- dating someone who's uh, white and off white. <laughs> <laughs> They're a mixed couple. One is white and one is offensively white. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I love you very much, and we'll talk to you all later. I'm happy that you got happier in the episode. It makes me very good. I wasn't upset. I was annoyed because we were I having just, problems with the internet. I was just poking at you, Bob. Oh, my God. Here Nigga, we go. Bye, everybody. Goodbye.